Okay guys, welcome back to the set video, set video of the forces um vibration, the slice of vibration anyway. <laughs> I miss you guys, welcome back. Now in this video we're just going to attempt the question um I left in the previous video. So um for those that didn't get a chance to attempt it, you can still pause the video and give this a try. And for those that you're able to attempt it, let's see if you got it correct. Okay. And if this is your very first time viewing the channel, please um, give just press on the subscribe button. Just subscribe to the channel and press on the notification bell as well, so that when I send or post new videos, you you receive notifications, so that you you be part of the few the first few people to get um, access to the video and with, within the first few minutes after it's it has been posted. I think I'm talking too much. Let's let's just do this question. Let's just do this. Question. So in this question, this says that again, there's a past question. Three coplanar forces of magnitude eight newtons, twelve newtons, and two newtons act at a point. The resultant of the forces has magnitude r newtons. The direction of the three forces and the resultant are shown in the diagram. Find r and theta. This is really interesting, and this was seven marks. So if you know by now, seven marks questions. Um, they are not. They are not straightforward. In this case, well, for mechanics, don't really be deceived by the marks. At times, 11 mark question is actually very, very easy to solve. So just follow the same principles, what you need to do, things you need not to do, and you go through this successfully. So let's start off with um, the resultant force. Let's break the resultant force into components. At least that's, that's what we can do for now. So breaking this into components, let me... Uh, bring out my arrows, this moves to the side and this moves to the side. So I can see that the resultant in the x direction, resultant in the x direction, which is going to be equal to this, because it faces the theta directly, is going to be r, um, I think sine of theta, because it faces it directly, and resultant in the y direction, r in y, is going to be r cos theta. Okay, so that is for starters, and um, we see what we can do from there. Now, let's now look at the other three forces. We are given a force of 8 newtons, 12 newtons, and 2 newtons. For the 2 newtons, we don't really uh, um, have any issues to do with it, because it's, it's exactly on the positive, sorry, on the y-axis. In this case, at the negative side, we don't need to resolve the forces or break down the forces into the component parts. But with the 12 and 8 newtons, we really need to break it into a component parts. So in this case, breaking this force, um, this there will be a force moving in this direction and force moving in this direction. And also breaking this force, um, there will be a force moving in this direction and a force moving in this direction. So we know that resultant in X is given by forces to the right minus forces to the left. In this case, there are... Um, there are two forces in the x direction, one to the left and one to the right. Um, this force is to the right and this force is to the left. So we're going to deal with these two forces. So the very first force to the right, that is going to be the 12 Newton force. We're going to break this 12 Newton force into its components. This is going to be 12. And because the, the side we're looking for is adjacent to the angle, it goes with the cosine of the angle, cos 25. And um, this gives us so 2.997. So 2.997. Good. So that is that is the resultant in the x direction. Now let's work out with let's work out the resultant in the y direction. Okay. Again, the y direction. In this case, there are three forces in the y direction. We've got this force, this force, and this force. So um, We've got two forces to the top and um, one force to the bottom. So these are the two forces to the top and um, this is the, the only force to the bottom. So looking at that one, I can say that the forces to the top, in this case, um, the 12 Newton force, the component of the 12 Newton force, that is vertical. Since it's directly facing the angle, it goes with the sine. So this becomes 2 sine, sorry, 12 sine, 25, plus there is another force to the top, that is the 8 Newton force. 8 signed 10 degrees and um, we subtract the forces to the bottom in this case 2 newton force good so we call on the calculator again 
Um, this gives us 12 sine 25 plus 8 sine 10 minus 2. And this gives us a total of um, 4.40, sorry, 4.461. So this is 4.461 Newtons. Let's just confirm that. Yes, it's 4.461, that is 2. Um, three decimal places. Now remember we got resultant in x to be r sine theta and resultant in y to be r cos theta. So let me just go ahead and name this one equation 1 and equation 2 and um, equation 3 doesn't really matter. I think naming it is going to even make it more complex so let's just go with the flow. Now we said that r sine theta is equal to resultant in x. And remember we got resultant in x also to be equal to um, 2.977, sorry 997. So I can say that r sine theta is equal to 2.997. So I won't be wrong to do the substitution. Similarly, r cos theta is equal to 4.461. Now the task is to find um, r and theta. So let me say that again, let me call this one an equation 5 and equation 6. If you don't mind, you can name any, you can give any name to these equations. Um, so far as you solve and you get the same answer. Now there are different ways of solving, but the easiest way of solving is to identify that tan theta is equal to sine theta over cos theta. So if you if you are able to establish this fact or you realize this fact, it becomes very easy. Um, some students will go ahead to find make out the subject and sub the uh, sub the results you get into the other equation. That is going to be a very very lengthy process, but you can you can work it out that way. You still get the same answer. In this case, I know that tan theta is equal to sine theta over cos theta, so I can say that equation five divide equation five by equation six. Um, doing the division. Um, R will cancel out R, so R and R goes away, and sine theta over cos theta gives me tan theta, so tan theta is equal to now 2.997 divided by 4.461. From there, I should be able to find theta with ease. So um, in this case, theta is going to be equal to the arctan of, so tan inverse of 2.997 over 4.461. This implies that theta is going to be equal to, um, let's call on the calculator. So uh, this is going to be tan inverse of 2.997 divided by 4.461. Okay, so um, that is 33.9 to one decimal place. So there's 33. 0.9 degrees to one decimal place, but because um, I am going to use this value to do a different calculation. After I'm finding theta and r, I'm not going to approximate to one decimal place. The marking scheme actually tells you to approximate to one decimal place, but if you approximate to one decimal place and you use that one in a subsequent calculation, it's very likely that your precision in terms of your answers is going to be very very off. So even though I'll leave my answer as this, but when I'm going to use theta in my or in a different calculation, I'm not going to use the 33.9. Instead, I'll use about three to four decimal places to make my answer more accurate. Okay, so let me just write the full thing over there. So there's 33.894 to four decimal place, three decimal place, sorry. So there's 33.894. Let's make it four decimal place, four, one. So from this equation, equation 1 or equation 2, I can now find my um, R. So let's, let's say from equation, from equation 5. So from, from equation 5, which we know that this is R sine theta is equal to 2.997. I can say that R is equal to 2.997 divided by sine theta but theta is equal to so this gives me 2.997 divided by sine of 
um, 33.8941. So R in this case is going to give me, um, let me call on the calculator. Again, I will use the exact value. So the answer we got was 33.894. So this becomes 2.997 divided by sine of the answer we got so that I use the exact value and this gives me out to be equal to 5.37 to 36 figures so 5.37 5.37 sorry 5.37 newtons and that answers the question and you do this for seven marks you we got the theta to be 33.9 degrees and we got the R to be 5.37 newtons okay so these are some fuel examples you come across dealing with um, resultant forces. In our next video, we're really going to talk about forces in equilibrium, when an object is in equilibrium, what it means, and um, the implications when objects are in equilibrium. Okay, so um, that's all for today's class. We'll meet in the next video. Bye for now.